Live from the Langara Newsroom, this is Langara News. Langara's only source of Langara News on the Langara College campus in the Langara neighborhood of South Vancouver. Beside the Langara Golf Course, filmed, reported, and produced by Langara Journalism students in the Langara Journalism Program at Langara. This is Langara News. Our top stories tonight. Black Friday is not living up to the chaos expected, at least not in Canada. Rescue dogs that have been traumatized are now looking for a new home. And there are new plans for the site of Vancouver's last Triple X Theatre. Good morning and welcome to Langara News for November 29th. I'm Jacqueline Langan. And I'm Penny Tammy. The morning of Black Friday is usually one of bad traffic, long lines and cranky customers. But the common chaos ended early on this day. Tyler Hooper has more. Shoppers heading down to the U.S. won't have to worry about long lines at the border. The drive down was very quiet, traffic was very sparse. I am standing outside a Walmart here in White Rock where things are dull and quiet and there aren't any shoppers around. It's Black Friday, but it looks like just any other day, or any other Friday for that matter. The atmosphere was also quiet at the usually busy Pacific Center. Some shoppers were not even aware that today had special significance. That's true. No one's died in queue today. It's been a relatively tame and quiet Black Friday here in Vancouver. For Langara News, I'm Tyler Hooper. There are new plans for the site of Vancouver's last Triple X theater. The Fox Cinema in Mount Pleasant has been resurrected yet again, this time as a live music venue and cabaret. With its liquor license application endorsed by City Council and an opening date slated for early next year, residents look forward to the change in their community. We just got a letter from the city saying, well, they want a liquor license. What do you think? It doesn't bother me. You know, it would be at night. We're gone. So, uh, no, I, I think it would be just fine. MP for Vancouver East Libby Davies has been at her office across the street from the Fox for 16 years. We supported it. We wrote a letter of support for the application to the city. And that's actually one thing that Mount Pleasant has, has a long track record as being um, uh, a community that's very um, welcoming um, to artists and art venues. So, so having um, the new place, uh, I think, just fits in perfectly. Residents also support the change. I mean, there's some great venues that have shut down over the last couple of years. Riches on Richards was like an amazing venue that got turned into condos. There's tons of venues that have just like kind of fallen away. I think it's definitely time for, especially some new, smaller venues. I think it's a good thing, yeah. It's like important, especially, I like the fact that it's an arts and music venue at the, um, the Fox Theatre because that's one thing this neighborhood is lacking. There's just no, not really many venues other than uh, the Biltmore, which is like a bit off the beaten path. So, so it's an interesting place to live because there's, it's quite eclectic in that way. Yeah. Um, and certainly just the businesses that have changed around here, I think having um, Hootsuite come in over there as well, it's becoming a place of a lot of young professionals, which is interesting. Um, and some of the best restaurants in Vancouver are located up Main Street, so. I'm at the end of my days. I got nothing to regret. So I'm happy that the people here have this community center now. I know the Fox and all that there. They were all kinds of shows. Good restaurants around here. It's given an uplift to the people. For Langara News, I'm Nick Eagland. Since May, hashtag Lunch Bay Vancouver has been packing and distributing lunches to people in need on the downtown east side. Now, Lagara students are joining in with a lunch bake effort of their own. Amy Jones has the story. For many people living in Vancouver's downtown east side, the support and donations of others in their community are invaluable. For these people, basic necessities like a healthy meal are often not met. To help those in need, the hashtag lunch bag movement has begun in cities all over the world, including Vancouver. Students at Langara have been inspired to get involved. The Langara Social Club is bringing people together to, um, to build 200 lunches for the homeless downtown. The Social Club is usually known for getting students together by throwing parties. 
But today, they're shifting gears by using some of the money they've fundraised to give back to the community. Some volunteers are social club members. Others saw the event advertised on posters around campus and on social media. Langara Social Club President Jay Solicito explains how he was inspired to organize the event. Um, I got the idea from, it was actually started in LA. Um, the, the initiative was, was just started by a bunch of friends and they used uh, hashtag lunch bag. So um, I was kind of been following them for the last couple of months and I thought it'd be a good idea for our club to, to do a similar kind of initiative. Volunteers have been hard at work all morning assembling the paper bag lunches on campus. Each lunch will contain a sandwich, a pastry, a piece of fruit, and a canned beverage. Volunteers were fortunate to have received some donations from within the community. A bunch of us just went over to, to Walmart, bought some food. Um, we got some of the bread donated from Uprising Bakery. And yeah, we just bought some of the food and brought it down here. Once the lunches are assembled, volunteers will take them downtown to give to those who need them the most. For Langara News, I'm Amy Jones. People are raising their glasses at a Surrey brewery today. Central City Brewers is celebrating its 10th birthday with a grand reopening in a massive new space. Trisha Lowe takes us inside the new state-of-the-art facility. Beer, beer, and more beer are what you'll find inside Central City Brewers' new 6,000 square meter facility. Rows of glistening stainless steel fermentation tanks and copper steel kettles line the insides of the brewery floor. It's a big step up for the Central City Brewers and Distillers. The award-winning microbrewery started as a small brew pub and liquor store in downtown Surrey in 2003, but was so popular that by 2009 it had reached full capacity. Today, it celebrated the grand opening of its $35 million building. Surrey Mayor Diane Watts was there to cut the ribbon. And I'm so very proud uh, from the port perspective of the city of Surrey that we could all come together in a collaborative way and make it happen. So congratulations. MLA John Yap was also in attendance. My terms of reference for the liquor policy uh, modernization effort uh, includes uh, recommendations to support economic development, greater investment, and job creation just as we're seeing right here. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Hey! Oh. And so it was an opportunity to look at uh, expanding an existing business in the city of Surrey, adding employment, economic development, and also to having something for the community where uh, the general public can come and, and have an experience such as this. So it was a win-win all the way around. And it gets the color from the barrels. This is only three months old. Wow. We already had a passion for making whiskey. And we'll move on to some vodkas and gins. Here on the BC coast, we have an amazing rainforest that has stuff that doesn't grow in the rest of the world, and gin is full of uh, botanicals, so we plan on using some of the local botanicals uh, here in British Columbia. Well, of course, they're all my babies, and uh, so which kid do you like the most, right? You know, I like them all, um, but I, I do have an affinity, affinity for hoppy beers. For Langara News, I'm Trisha Lowe. Lucky and Kayla have been through a lot in their lives, and in doggy retirement, they're looking for a new leash on life. Reporter Tammy English went to visit them at West Bend SPCA. The West Vancouver SPCA has a few special guests right now. Two of the sled dogs that survived the notorious Whistler Cull three years ago. While the dogs are used to people, their lives as sled dogs make them unique. So Kayla and Lucky, um, they're senior, so bonded pair. Um, previously where they came from, they were always found running together and getting into mischief together. Meet Kayla and Lucky, two of the 17 retired sled dogs spread across the BC SPCA who are waiting to be adopted. Kayla was the lead dog, always at the front of the pack, but she needs Lucky in her life. And Kayla definitely takes a little bit longer to warm up, um, but when she does, she's very responsive and, and very affectionate. Kyla and Lucky were previously owned by Outdoor Adventures at Whistler, where 56 sled dogs were killed during a slump in business after the 2010 Olympics. The surviving dogs were donated to the Whistler Sled Dog Company, but since that business folded earlier this year, the SPCA is trying to find the dogs' permanent homes. 
It's really about finding the right match. So if sometimes that can be someone just by chance that day walking through the door that is a perfect match or um, can be quite some time to really, we really want to make sure that these dogs are going to a home where they're going to be happy. Since they were tour dogs, Kyla and Lucky are used to being around people, but a domestic house setting is not something they're familiar with. The ideal owner will not only have a yard, but will be able to spend most of their day with them. As pack animals, the two are used to constant company. We're going to be selective in the sense that we want the dogs to be in the best situation possible. Um, so definitely just coming in and having a conversation with the staff members and just seeing if uh, your environment and your kind of knowledge and personality type would be a good match for them or not is, is the first step. Anyone interested in adopting the dogs can call the West Vancouver SPCA. For Langara News, I'm Tammy English. It's time for Vancouverites to break out their umbrellas again as the rain returns for the holiday season. We turn to Dana Bowen for more news. Dana, how's it going out there? As you can see, it's grey and cloudy today with rain expected for this afternoon. It's currently 9 degrees and we're expected to have 20 to 30 millimeters of rain until tomorrow evening. So back in Toronto the weather is like minus 25 and it's freezing. But here in Vancouver the weather seems like it's ranges between 5 and 20, which is good. We've had a, we've had a good stretch of not having a lot of rain. And just in time for December, expect a mixture of rain and snow for Monday. It'll be 5 degrees with a low of zero, so get out your scarves! But lucky for us, it's a lot colder in the rest of BC. With Kamloops having part rain and snow and it's only 2 degrees, they're expecting snow for all of this weekend. Prince George is expecting snow and rain as well as a high of plus 1. And in Fort Nelson today, it's minus 16 degrees. Snow is expected for them tomorrow and Sunday. Have Senate scandals caused a rise in liberal polling? Also, a German officer has put down his schnitzel and resorted to cannibalism. Join us after the break. something to smile about very soon. The white stuff is expected in great quantities over the next two weeks. Andrea Anthony has a story. Last year, Mount Seymour had Canada's second largest snowfall of the season, according to snowbrains.com. While the mountain currently only has 23 centimeters of snow, it is expected to get much more this season. This building right here is a great example of what we actually have to do to our buildings because we get so much snowfall. Typically, snowfall will come all the way up to that window. This season, Seymour is offering a variety of new promotions for customers, including a special evening lift pass and a new parent and toddler day pass. Sales have been good. Season pass um, holders have been, have been coming back. We're really excited. We're just now waiting for it to open. The 2013-2014 winter season is all about offering greater value to our guests. Mount Seymour is not open yet, but they're expecting major snowfall in the next couple weeks with the drop of the temperature in Vancouver, and then they'll be opening to the public. But that hasn't stopped everyone from hitting the slopes. Mount Seymour doesn't have the same snowmaking capabilities of Grouse and Cypress, but if Santa wants to keep riding the mountain, he'll have to trade in his bike for a pair of skis. For Langara News, I'm Andrea Anthony. Lunch choices for Vancouver residents just got a little harder. Local food trucks showed up at Vancouver City Hall today for Food Truck Day. Here's Jenny Payne with the story. 
This would have been hard to imagine only five years ago, when the city of Vancouver was planning on going beyond the usual hot dogs and chestnut stands. It is now catching fire with over 137 food trucks and 30 more to come by 2016. We spend more time checking out the ones in Portland, but I've, I've done some here as well, so it's been a good, uh, good experience. Abdul Kim, a self-proclaimed foodie, insists the Vancouver food truck industry is still growing. Looks like it's growing. I mean, Portland's been around for a long time, so it's uh, got a lot of uh, got a lot of uh, good choices. But I mean, Portland's got over 600 food trucks. We're definitely not a fraction of the way there, but it's uh, we got a great selection as well. City Hall invited four food trucks today to well employees and residents. Phyllis Cornacia has been operating Mangal Kiss for three years. Her regular customers can't get enough of her Middle Eastern barbecue. We kind of just sort of do our version of uh, a shawarma. With our new menu, winter menu, I'm uh, featuring desserts on our streets now. We have chocolate mousse with chocolate cake crumble at the bottom. We have double chocolate donuts with uh, toasted coconut. Vancouver Rights voiced appetites for more food cart pods recently, voting Science World and Chinatown as the first destinations they like to see more vendors. In case you're wondering what's on the menu today? We got the uh, dirty rice bowl. So i uh, gonna try something a little different, a little pork belly, a little bit of duck confit, should be good. The pierogies. pierogies. The fully loaded pierogies. For Langara News, I'm Jenny Pang. And in national news, a new direction for the official opposition in Canada. The Liberal Party has cause to celebrate, as new polls indicate that they are now six points ahead of the Conservatives. The shift has been attributed to a drop in support for the NDP. Tory support remains at the same level at 29%, despite recent scandals in the Senate. RCMP Corporal Ron Francis tearfully handed in his mounted uniform to his superiors following revelations of drug use while on duty. Francis said that I have not one flaw on my service record. My only flaw is that I stuck up for the Canadian people. Francis uses medicinal marijuana, which he claims was prescribed for post-traumatic stress disorder. He has been removed from active duty. Toronto Mayor Rob Ford will be hosting a new YouTube show beginning in December. He will co-host the program with his brother, Doug. This follows one episode reality show on Sun Network. Ford said that he's received many requests from American networks for broadcasting rights to a reality show. In international news, anti-government forces are on the move in Thailand. Popular opposition to Prime Minister Ying Luck Shinawatra has hit the streets, demanding his resignation. Riot police have been deployed to contain the protesters as demonstrators seek support amongst the armed forces. Shinawatra has pleaded for calm if pro-government rally is expected this Saturday. The conflict in Syria has displaced over 1 million children, according to a new UN report. 52% of the entire Syrian refugee population are children. The majority are under 12. 1 in 10 Syrian children are laborers working long hours in dangerous conditions, leading to fears that these children will become part of a lost generation. There is more chaos on the streets of Egypt as protesters violently clash with security forces. Hundreds of people have joined protests against new controversial legislation intended to clamp down on demonstrations in favor of deposed President Mohamed Morsi. 21 young women were sentenced to 11 years for their role in a recent peaceful protest. A German police officer has been arrested for allegedly murdering and attempting to eat another man. The victim's dismembered corpse was found in the Ayers Mountains of eastern Germany. The suspect claims that he killed the man at the victim's request. Police believe that the two met online at a forum dedicated to cannibalism. Coming up, firefighters blazed across the ice for breaking brakes and some green designs from young mice. Join us after this. Crippling weight of society's expectations bringing it down. We have just the solution for you. Hats for bikes! Never feel good to be a gangster. A real gangsta ass nigga plays his cards right. A real gangsta ass nigga never runs a fucking life. Hats for bikes changed my life. <laughs> Niggas always got a high cap. Showing all these boys how we shot them. But real gangsta ass niggas don't flex nuts. Cause real gangsta ass niggas. <laughs> Mentos. 
the Fresh Maker. Don't let the darkening days deter you. Here to help you break your cabin fever as we head into December is Carissa Thorpe with entertainment and events. It's, it's been less than one week since a Bare Naked Ladies fan started a petition urging the Canadian rockers to watch the documentary Blackfish and cancel a planned show at SeaWorld. The film shines a light on the use of killer whales at the Florida park. St. Catherine's activist Mike Garrett created the petition on Sunday night after learning of the concert. Nearly 12,000 people had signed it by the time the band posted a message on its Facebook page Wednesday night. It reads, We've talked things over and decided not to play at SeaWorld. This is a complicated issue and we don't claim to understand all of it, but we don't feel comfortable proceeding with the gig at this time. The post goes on to say that the band's decision isn't about money, petitions or press, but about listening to fans. In other music news, Downtown Vancouver is sure to be a buzz as the Queen Bee herself, Beyonce, takes the stage at Rogers Arena tomorrow night. It's part of her Mrs. Carter Show World Tour. No doubt many, if not all, of the single ladies will be out in fierce force for the event since the show is nearly sold out. There are still some tickets available through Ticketmaster, but they will set you back almost $300 a piece. If Beyonce isn't your thing, but downtown is your downtime destination of choice, you can skate your way into the holiday spirit at Robson Square's outdoor ice rink this weekend. Hidden beneath the hustle and bustle of Robson between the art gallery and the law courts, the rink is open 9 to 9 Sunday through Thursday and until 11 Friday and Saturday nights. Skate holders can skate scot-free or rentals are also available for $4, but it's cash only. You can also expect Santa sightings downtown as St. Nick is set to touch down Sunday for the 10th annual parade in his honour. Even if you've been naughty this year, you can make nice by bringing a bit or a bite to share in the quest to bag hunger. Volunteers will be collecting non-perishable items and cash donations for the Greater Vancouver Food Bank. The parade starts at 1, departing from Georgia and Broughton, before winding its way to Howe and Davie. Whatever you're after, there's something for everyone on this list. For entertainment and events, I'm Carissa Thorpe. For a look at sports, here's our sports team, Jesse and Jesse, or as they call themselves, Jesse Squared. With the Canucks in the middle of an Eastern road trip and the Whitecaps and Lions in their offseason, today we focus on sports at the grassroots level. The finals of the annual Firefighters Hockey Tournament took place today in Burnaby. Without big contracts or advertisements on the boards, this is hockey being played in its purest form. Jesse Lamb has the story. The annual Firefighters Hockey Tournament is a tradition among firefighters in the Lower Mainland. Uh, this is our annual Christmas tournament. Vancouver has its own fire league that plays every Monday morning, but every Christmas uh, all the departments get together and put a tournament together of all different levels. So. Even in the finals, there continues to be an emphasis on sportsmanship. We do it because it's for fun. It's uh, entertainment value. It's nice to see the other departments. Uh, it's an appreciative thing to support our Vancouver brothers uh, who take the time and effort out to put forward this tournament. It's sometimes hard for the firefighters to keep their hockey skills sharp with a busy schedule but these players seem to find time. Well, we, we play uh, this tournament once a year, and a lot of the departments have what we call drop-in hockey, where we all participate and uh, skate in. It was good for the fire department that we get out here, and uh, it's just a lot of fun all together. I'm at Eight Rinks in Burnaby, where the annual Firefighters Christmas Tournament is happening right behind me. Right now, it's the finals between Vancouver and Surrey, where bragging rights is on the line. Uh, I think it's a paper plate. Bragging rights. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just bragging rights. So how does the winning team of the annual Firefighters Hockey Tournament celebrate? Well, some of us have to work, some other guys will be hitting the beer, so... <laughs> <laughs> For Langara News, I'm Jesse Lamb. As the city of Vancouver aims to become the world's greenest city, it's enlisting the help of college students. Gavin Fisher has the story. Vancouver City Hall was buzzing this morning as college students from across the city presented their designs for sustainability projects. I did a design where the city is made up of coffee cups to, to represent how much we go through in a day and that's something like a billion I think just in Vancouver. It's crazy. It's just crazy numbers. Students from six schools design projects based on food, waste, transportation issues and more. People don't know where to get, you know, a local beet that has grown just, you know, next store. We don't know where to go get it, but the idea is that we want to try and address that, so make that barrier removed. 
The designs were created by City Studio Program students to promote the city's green action plan. The, the students were starting to say, I want to earn a living and I want to save the planet doing it, but it's difficult to take courses that can teach me how to do that in university. These innovative designs will go on display at City Hall. But do these ideas have a real-world application? Those will all go directly to city staff that are working on those um, bigger uh, priority areas. And these projects help inform the city's work and give them new ideas. I'm standing outside of Vancouver City Hall. We've just seen a lot of different ideas being presented uh, for the 2020 Greenest City goal. And one day we might see some of these ideas implemented around the city. For Langara News, I'm Gavin Fisher. If you didn't go to the mall to pick up some Black Friday bargains, don't fret. After watching this footage, you'll probably be glad that you did it. That's our newscast for this evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jackie Langan. And I'm Kenny Dami.